How you doing guys? Chad here. We're in the garden. <laughs> it's so fun to be in the garden. We're getting a little bit more organized here. We got this landscape fabric that's solving a lot of our problems and uh, it's a lot more enjoyable to do our gardening because of that. You're basically not battling weeds and grass all the time. But what I wanted to talk about today was how we go about our succession planting. I wouldn't necessarily say that we actually have a plan. We just kind of use certain guides of our own personal preferences on different types of veg to uh, grow in succession. And I thought it might be a good idea to share some of the things that we're doing in today's video. Now, a quick explanation of succession planting for those who aren't familiar is, you know, you plant things that grow and then in a couple weeks you might plant again and a couple weeks you might plant again. And if you're harvesting some lettuce today, you're gonna harvest some more lettuce next week. You're gonna harvest some more lettuce the following week because you've staggered the sowings of all your seeds. And we've been trying to figure out a proper succession planting plan for our garden here. Since last year, I've been thinking about this because it happened that we had all of the lettuce come to harvest at the same time. And what are we gonna do with 30 heads of lettuce? right? Where what we should have done is planted six heads and then in a couple weeks, six heads and then in a couple weeks, six heads so that you'll have a continual flow of harvesting lettuce for the entire growing season. Now, obviously things that take too long to harvest, you're unable to grow it successionally. Things like garlic, onions, carrots, you know, things that have like an entire season of growing before you harvest. Some of the things that we've been working towards this succession are short harvest veggies, things like peas, snow peas and snap peas that my darling's harvesting right now. We also have green beans over there and lettuce. Lettuce is another one. We have lettuce over there that we've already harvested. We also have a succession planting of lettuce right here. This is not quite ready, but it will be in a few days. So that's the goal. Now there's a few different ways that succession growing can be done, but I'm going to tell you some of the things that we do here. Because we're not fully, fully, perfectly organized with all of our exact planting rows and beds, we have lettuce in two different areas and we've used them in two different beds. We've also done that for radish. We have radish in a bed over there that we've already harvested and we also have radish right here. One way that we do is that this entire row is sowed and then we've left this row vacant. This row is sowed, this row is vacant. So by the time these rows are getting big and they're getting ready to harvest, these are being sowed into new seeds right here. The other style of succession planting that we're doing is by section. So this is an eight foot bed and my darling is harvesting all of the lettuce from this section. We're also gonna be sowing seeds after the harvest. This is another way to successively have growings. So those are the two different methods that we're using that I'm explaining, that you can plant here today, and then you plant again in two weeks, and you plant again in two weeks. So you'll have a continuous flow. And the other method is that you plant in a section, and then you harvest, and you plant right away again after you've harvested. But you can only do that for short growing veggies. So my darling is just preparing this bed now and we're gonna be planting a little section of romaine lettuce and a little section of sugar snap peas. You can see that weeding is a constant battle. Every time you're cultivating the soil around your veggies, you just try to take out these tiny little weeds before they get to be a problem. So what I've just done here is three rows, but this center row is empty. So this is all seeds. So we're just gonna cover this and give it a quick watering afterwards. And then this is also all romaine seeds. So what we're gonna do is give it around two weeks and then we'll also be sowing seeds in here. This section that my darling's preparing right now, we're just gonna plant the entire section with sugar snap peas. This is the first year that we tried growing kohlrabi. It's kind of like a cabbage type thing. We'll see how it cooks and tastes. 
So what in, I've done in essence here is I planted one big section of snap peas and I've left the middle section cleared and then we did two rows of romaine lettuce and one row is cleared. So two weeks from now we're going to sow this empty patch with more peas and we're going to sow that empty row with more romaine lettuce. We really do try to keep it simple though and plant in two different batches, one now, one in two weeks. That seems to be the easiest way in managing all of these raised beds. We're so happy that we were pretty successful with the broccoli too. I mean that one and that one are bolting a little bit so we'll give that to the pigs and the rabbits. But these ones, look at this broccoli. Woo! First time. It's a little small but we'll take it. First time ever that my Darden and I were successful in growing our own grocery style broccoli. This is amazing. Look at that crown. This is exciting. And I think a good tip is to try not to be overwhelmed and keep your plantings and sowings as organized as you can. You may even go as far as labeling the rows. And I'm saying that with a little bit of candor because although it may look like we're super organized, when we planted some seeds a little earlier in the year, we forgot what we had planted there. We had to wait until they started to grow before we actually recognized the, the, the veg, <laughs> and then we knew what we planted. We have a whole bunch of this mustard that we planted, and it did really well for us. And what we're gonna do is harvest some of this and give it to the animals, we'll give it probably to the pigs, rabbits, and chickens. I don't know if the geese and the ducks will like it, I'll try it. But I think it's important to give them some of our abundance here too. This is not all for us, this is for some of the animals. I think I might actually do a whole video about that because it's a really important subject to me. I don't know if any of these tips will help anybody out there. I'm not really intending to teach people what to do for their succession plan. I mean, we're honestly still learning about this in real time. Um, I just wanted to share with you guys what it is we're doing to learn about the succession stuff. This stuff that she's plucking right here, this is a white radish. And this is uh, traditionally used in Filipino dishes like sinigang. It's kind of like a, a semi-sour soup. Uh -huh. It's quite yummy. I've tasted it before. It's good. It's really good if you have a cold. It really okay. cuts through the mucus, you know. But, you know, this is very good for sinigang. See, we have okra over there in that bed. But my Darden also planted okra right here as a succession. So basically, these are very small. Those ones are very big. And uh, this is also a couple of romaine lettuce. Look at this beautiful lettuce. It's beautiful. I feel like I could eat like a chicken tzatziki souvlaki wrap with that lettuce in it right now. <laughs> the celery is getting there. Yeah. Look at it. See, it's growing. It's the first time we're ever growing celery too. So we're trying to get some practice. So far, so good. It looks like it's growing really well. This is all bok choy here, and it's already bolted into flowers. But my darling's going to be preparing a slow cooker meal for the dogs with a whole chicken. And she's going to put all of this bok choy in there, all chopped up. The dogs absolutely love that recipe with the bok choy in it. You see, she's harvesting all of this bok choy. But this is all bok choy right here that she's already sowed last week. So she did a whole line in the center here. All of the cucumbers starting to look really good too. We're having to train it to go up and around the trellis here. Okra's looking really good. Starting to get the little the little veggie okras there. Who doesn't like some Louisiana gumbo with okra, right? She's also got some kind of peas right here to grow up the trellis. And over on this side, she has a whole bunch of Filipino vegetables. This is what you call bitter melon. This stuff here and it's a climbing and as the veggies grow you'll get a good look at what it looks like they sell it in the grocery stores here anyways it's called bitter melon i don't care for it because it's a little bit too bitter but it's used in a lot of traditional filipino dishes and this whole side right here is all trombosino squash you know those big weird shape looking squash i tried that this year 
and this is what it looks at this point in time. So hopefully we'll get some wicked awesome trombacino squash. Onions are doing good. We got more onions over there. We got carrots right here. Actually, I think there's three different kind of onions. There's red onions, there's scallion onions, and there's green onions. So that's gonna be good. There you go, rabbits. Hope you enjoyed the quick little video here, folks. It's nice to spend the day with you in the garden and give everybody an update and see all the stuff and how it's growing. It's really fun. But uh, if you haven't seen the video about how we are transforming this abandoned space into this amazing garden, you can click the video. I'll put it up on the screen here and you can take a little perusal of this nice episode. Thanks for watching. Okay, you guys take care.